Hello friends. In this session, I am going to show you a demonstration of the Data Open Toolkit. The Data Open Toolkit works with the command line interface. You may have worked with DOS or Disk Operating System, which also used to work with command line interface. So I have opened the DOS command and I'm already in the folder where the data open toolkit files have been unzipped. Typically, when you download the data open toolkit files, make sure that you directly unzip them onto the C drive. This is because all the paths in the sample files have been set as C colon so and so. All right. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the environment for the tools in the open toolkit to operate. To do this, I'm going to give a command that is start CMD or start a command prompt. As you can see, one more command prompt has opened and this command prompt now has got all the requirement of parameter setup fulfilled. So my tools will be ready to run now. Notice that here the color is different than the earlier prompt. Now this is something that I have done for convenience of viewing and demonstration. The change in color is not a part of the data toolkit. So I have changed the color properties of the window because I think that black text on white background is better legible. I have opened the explorer window next to this DOS prompt so that you can see the files that we'll be working on. I will show you the data map file and the topic file later on. I recommend that you go through the data open toolkit tool theory video before you proceed with this particular video. Assuming that you have already done that, let's go ahead. So now that my command prompt is open and the environment variables are set, I'm going to run the file. As mentioned earlier, there is a scripting tool that we use. The tool is called as ant. So I'm going to give the ant command ant dash f, which means run the file. And the name of the file is build underscore demo dot xml now watch what happens when i run this particular file it has got the file and it is asking me which data map file i want to load for generating the output by default it will take hierarchy dot data map so i'm going to simply say enter here now it is asking me what should be the output directory name on the right hand side in the explorer window you can see the folders and the files in the data ot 1.5.3 folder now I'm going to choose a file name which is not there. So let me say Mac 23 Jan, that is today's date. And let me say enter. Now it is asking me what type of output do I want to generate. As we have mentioned in the theory, you can choose the different FO or a different formatting object. 
and then generate the output using the XSLT processor. So let's specify the output as PDF here. So PDF and now it's asking me whether I wanted to go ahead and do the compilation. So I'm going to say yes. Now after I do this, watch out on the right hand side folder. See if a folder called as Mac 23 Jan gets created. At the same time, watch out that on the left hand side in the command prompt, you'll see a lot of commands being executed. And finally, it will say build is successful. So let's go ahead and say yes. All right. So it's running my commands. On the right hand side folder, you can see that Mac 23 Jan has been created. Now let me open that folder. I am inside Mac 23 Jan and when the output is compiled, Data OT will say build is successful and it will show me a PDF file in this folder on the right hand side here. So you can see that a lot of temporary files are being created and the transformation happening. So the various rules of transformation are being applied now by the XSLT processor. As you can see, a number of commands have been executed and it's not logical to give all these commands manually one by one. And that's the reason we create a list of commands and put it in a script file. In this case, the name of the script file was build underscore demo dot XML. There you go. It says that build is successful here. And on the right hand side, you can see a hierarchy.pdf file that has got created. Let's open the file and see if it is a valid PDF file. All right, and here is our PDF file that we have got generated. And in this PDF, you can see that you have got the bookmarks defined on the left hand side and when you click on them you can see the topic on the right hand side. So this is the PDF that we actually created right now. The question is where did it take the content from? Well the content was taken from the source files. Now let's look at those source files. So I am going to move aside the PDF file and let's go back here and you'll see the sample folder in data OT. Now within sample you see the hierarchy.data map. So this was the data map file that it had loaded and using this it has generated the output. Let's look at what is there inside hierarchy.data map. So this is that window. So it shows you that various topics have been referred to and based on this this particular PDF was built there. So if you compare the topics in the PDF, you'll find that these topics are as per the topics that are mentioned in the hierarchy.datamap file. So you have got garage task overview, then you have got changing the oil and so on. That means the content is being arranged as per the organization mentioned in the data map file. But the question is where is the content coming from. So let's go ahead and open a topic. So I am opening that topic here and this is my topic. Alright, so this is the shoveling snow topic and from this it's getting the content. So the data map file shows you the order in which the topics will be arranged the topics actually have the content that goes to the output and let's compare this with the PDF and see. So let's bring in the PDF file and shoveling snow. So you can see here that this content out here, get the shovel out of the garage and so on is exactly this. So this and this content 
matches so this is the topic from which the content has come so let me minimize these windows so minimizing the topic and the output pdf and the hierarchy dot data map so the topics have come from the tasks folder so shaveling snow dot xml is here so this is where it has taken the topics from this is where it has taken the hierarchy dot data map that's the data map file that we use to compile and this is the main folder of our data open toolkit so we just generated a pdf file using data open toolkit all right in this part of video i am going to show you how to generate one more output which is html help or a chm file so let's go ahead and proceed with data ot so let's give the command ant dash f and build underscore demo dot xml enter the first thing it's going to ask me is which data map file to use so i'm going to press enter because it defaults to hierarchy dot data map let me show that to you here so as you can see here by default it takes hierarchy dot data map so i'll say okay so i'll just press enter here and output file name so I'm going to create a separate folder for this. I'll say Mac 23 Jan CHM. All right. And the output file type. In the previous attempt, we did a PDF. So this time I'm going to say HTML HELP. HTML help. And there we go. Now, once again, I'm going to say yes. And watch what happens when I say yes. On the right hand side over here, a folder will get created and then data OT is going to pick up the data map file, pick up the topics and it's going to build my output by applying various transformations to it. So yes and enter. So as you can see here, the Mac 23 Jan CHM folder has been created. And on the left hand side, you can see that data OT is executing the various commands. Now let's double click this folder and see what's there inside. Right. Let's Okay, some files are getting created here. And there you see the hierarchy.chm file has got created. And on the left hand side, in the command prompt, it is saying that build is successful and you have created a file. So let's go ahead and open this chm file now. And let's pull it in here to see it. So this is the chm file that has got built. And you can see the various topics. You can see that the topics have also got links and you can see the various topics under the second folder as well so it's as powerful as that data open toolkit use it to generate different types of output the popular formats pdf chm web help eclipse help everything is possible that brings me to the end of this particular video please do go ahead and provide me your feedback my email id is M -A -K, M-A-K, Mac at technorights.com. M-A-K at T-E-C-H-N-O-W-R-I-T-E-S dot com. Thank you. So that's my email ID for you.